What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, February 4th, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes 30 Under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues in San Francisco, a.k.a. the verified one at Tim Gettys. What's Tim House? Good to be here with you today, Greg. It's good to be here with you today, Tim Gettys. Talk to me about the hair. Where are we at right now with hair uh, levels? Are you happy? Are you unhappy? No. Are you more oh, happy than on. you've been it recently? It looks good. It looks I'm, good, no, no, Tim. No. It's fine. It's fine. I'm just, I'm not happy with it because it's at the point that it's not long enough to stay where I want it to be. Like sure. you have this whole like swoop going on. I, I like do. it it's when, really when, long. when the hair continues. Whereas right now it gets a little too spiky. So sure. I have to kind of mat it down more than i like to do so that's that's my only major complaint here is the, is the mat down uh but otherwise feeling pretty good it's also you know because g is not a professional yeah. like they have a super cut so uh yeah. she can't do <laughs> the, the, the top so, so it's like my the, the back is a little big and high it's hidden by the headphones so you wouldn't know but yeah exactly yeah i got it, a fun it, new sweater though look at it all right san francisco yeah you got that's the pyramid fun. there you got the it's bridge got the there the dildo mic's in it. coming back in it does salesforce you hate salesforce I do. I had a big talk about that with Gio. I was like, hey, I guess we're giving in at this point. It's part of the fucking skyline. We mm. can't change that. We can't fix that. Who, what's this shirt all about? Is this just some kind of design, or is it like some, some new brand we're rep, you're repping? Uh, I got Greg. Instagram. Instagram targeted. Gotcha. Yeah, I know. I know. I know it's our city, Kevin. I, was just, I didn't know if in. this is like a... I didn't know, you know how like we like San Francisco. I don't know if this is like some other thing, like sweatshirts by the Bay or some do shit. Do we like, like you know, San Francisco, or do you have a, we love like, San Francisco. A, an, an attachment to it that like none of us understand? Because you've never explained I don't it. think that's true. No, they've done the bags for us. They did a bunch of other stuff for us. Seems, I've seen people wear their stuff other than me. Hmm. Like your Joey's. Hmm. Chia. Chia. Yeah, so there you go, Kevin. Here's what I want you to do. Sorry we can't all be fans of fucking... God damn it, I couldn't get there in time. What's yeah, that stupid Death band? Angel. Death, Death, Death Angel. Angel. You know there what is, I mean? Is, I had it. I had, it's, it's Thursday. You know what I mean? I'm, I'll give I'm, you the joke. I'll give I'm, you a I'm Steve Rogers behind the movie theater picking up the shield at this point. All right, I'm just trying to go. You know what it is, Greg? What? It's WandaVision Day, baby. Ooh, it's an I MCU know. day. I wish it was a yeah. night, WandaVision night. That's the no. thing. You're, you're crazy. I go to bed and I, I watch it in the morning, but I appreciate you. Well, I, I mean, I do it twice. That's the beauty of this. But Cool Greg is into this. Cool Greg's love loving, loving WandaVision love to yeah. the point that he wants to like watch it with me. So tonight's going to wow. be our first time. That's wow. he, missed, he missed last week's. So oh, God. We're, he's going to watch last week's leading into he's this week's. We're going to do it that. together at midnight. Very stoked. That's, all, that's uh, amazing. Tim, yeah. Last night we were super, or this morning, I guess. Last night we did, we're continuing our MCU rewatch in chronological order. So we did Captain Marvel last night. Uh, and then, yeah, this morning we were taking our walk. And I was like, Jen, order. Jen, we're, can you believe it? WandaVision tomorrow. And she's like, I know it's my favorite day. Uh, because we've seen it the other way, Kevin. And so oh, this was on Disney Plus but this way. Any, was like, like, Jen was like, that's really person, cool. Why don't we right? do it that way? New person. No, it's just me and Jen. Okay. We've seen it all that's before. That's the thing. We've seen all the movies before. Here's a new way to experience them. Tim, you have something to say? Wait, real no, quick. Can you bring up your mic? Can you can you check your mic levels? You sound a little low to me. You're a dumb bitch. I fucking hate Come you. Come on, that was a great one, Kevin. That was a it's, great visual gag. It says it's, it's, it's where it's uh it's where it normally is. It's at three, Kevin. Would you like me to take it higher? No, no. Greg, I'm upset with you. I'm a little let down. I thought you were gonna bust into some Nickelback. Is it Nickelback? It's, it's not Nickelback. Nickelback. Uh, see, I went. Yellow see, I want you to know. You want to no, know the song no, that kicked? Not it? yellow card. No, 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 no. The song that kicked in my head was from Shaun of the Dead. Creed. I get high, baby. I get high, baby. Ah. White lines when they're coming coming out of the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just watched the movie. No, no, no. I, I know that. Come on. You Shaun of the Dead. That. Great movie. You nailed, you nailed Thank that. you. Thank you. No, what was I looking for, though? Greg? Can you take me higher? Thank now, you. that, of course, is a track that's been ruined by Twitch.tv slash Andy Cortez, though. So mm -hmm. uh, it's dead mm -hmm. to me, and he's dead to me as well. But you know what's not dead to me? The fact that Sony plans for the PlayStation 5 to beat the PlayStation 4, uh, Mass Effect 1 not having some of its DLC for a crazy reason, and more on Apple's mixed reality headset, because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news need know about. If you like that, be part of the show at patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Over on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, 
names you can write in to be on the show. You can be a Patreon producer. You can be the squad up of the day, but probably most importantly for the majority, you can get the show ad free. You can get the show with the exclusive post show we do each and every weekday on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, no big deal. You can watch us record the show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. If you're watching live, like the Naughty Biscotti, Royal Martin, Too Familiar, Joshy G731. You have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, listening on podcast services, and watching on roosterteeth.com. Uh, housekeeping for you there is a brand new episode of the blessing show up on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and it's all about star wars video games it is another certified banger you need to go over there and support it remember blessing show uh, one of our new initiatives here in 2021 one of the reasons we hired roger it is an amazing show where uh, blessing talks straight to you uh, given his uh, you know video essay pieces uh, a new home over on youtube.com slash kind of funny games that's the only place to get them other than patreon.com slash kind of funny games of course uh but go to youtube.com slash kind of funny games subscribe like and share uh today is the kind of funny podcast of course we do two kind of funny podcasts now a week in 2021 one with a guest and today's guest is none other than mega ran Woo! You know him, of course, as a music artist, but he's also now a published author. He'll be here to talk about uh, Dream Master, his memoir, uh, and hang out with us and have a good time. You can get that live today, patreon.com slash kind of funny, or of course, patreon.com slash kind of funny games gold, or if you have no books, toss her away. It'll be live as a podcast and a video tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Graham of Legend, David Mindtel, Trent Berry, Blackjack, Louise Aguiar, who... And when I said, hey, at 8-Bit Louise in the last show, when I was like, I think I'm screwing up your last name, and Kevin screwed it up too, even though he's trying to claim he didn't. I nailed uh, it. What do shout you mean? Out, shout out to Louise, who went on and just put up a tweet. Just put up a tweet of, hey, Greg and Kevin, here's how you say my name. Aguiar. I responded, Thank you very I much. nailed it, and he said nothing, so... You know he I mean? said in the initial tweet that you screwed it up too, so that's yeah, where it comes from. He only from. heard the first time where I was Can like, you take me high? You know, somebody just subbed, I guess. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and of course, our final. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Two more uh, Patreon producers: James Davis at James Davis makes, who works at Rooster Teeth now. Are you aware of this? Yeah, he's been there for uh, quite a while now. Great. Yeah. I don't blame you. Things move pretty fast nowadays. But he's well, been you know, there. I, yeah, year but and it, a half? well, sure, 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 sure. But you know me up on email a couple weeks ago and he was like hey you might remember me as the guardian from this event i'm like oh yeah sure no problem and then it was yesterday talking to him where i was like wait a second like it came in davis james yeah. <laughs> and i'm like wait and i went to his twitter and verified i'm like you motherfucker you you're motherfucker, at james davis makes yeah. you're at you're at james you why are you burying the lead on this so i know totally. who you are he did the exact same thing to me and and he was like trying to be like oh yeah you know i met you at rtx or whatever and i'm like motherfucker i've known you forever <laughs> like yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. you introduced yourself the wrong way here <laughs> you are james motherfucking davis Davis, man. Uh, and then uh, the nanobiologist rounding out the Patreon producers. Of course, nano needing no introduction. Uh, today, we're brought to you by Brooklyn and Honey, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Why are you half assing it, Kevin? Time for some news. Seven items on the Roper Report. Oh, Baker Seven. You brought me back on. What did you get from Lucho's? You said you were ordering Lucho's for breakfast. Oh, uh, I got me a burrito. I don't know what oh, Paul got. I missed that. Maybe I missed some, that. I missed that. What'd you put oh, in the burrito? God. You put chorizo? You put some oh, sausage in there? So they don't do chorizo anymore. Now they do soy rizo only. And I, no, 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 no. Soy rizo is very good. Soy rizo is very good. Is it better than chorizo? It's, it's one of those things that... Don't lie. Think, don't fucking lie. Listen to me. Listen to me, Greg. If you're not thinking about it, it's it, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't fucking know. All right? And this is me, a carnivore telling you this. All yeah. right? All right, yeah. Kev, I got to say I'm I'm pretty proud of you because when you when Greg asked you what'd you get, the way that you said a burrito sounded like it was the beginning of a list. But then you just said, <laughs> "I got a burrito." And you're like, and I don't know what Paula got, but it could have went a different way. Yeah. So I'm proud of you. That's some character development. <laughs> Jeez. Number one on the road for report. Can the PlayStation 5 beat the PlayStation 4? We go to IGN, where Jordan Ullman writes, Sony plans to sell over 14.8 million PlayStation 5 units during its second financial year on sale, April 2021 to March 2022. 
That's more than the hugely successful PlayStation 4 shipped in its own second financial year, but that goal could be affected by a global semiconductor shortage. In a briefing following Sony's Q3 FY 2020 earnings, transcribed by The Motley Fool, a Sony spokesperson noted the company's hopes to outsell the PS4's second-year sales numbers. Quote, for the next fiscal year, we believe that there will be strong demand. We will we believe that there will be strong demand to continue. The second year of the launch of the PlayStation 4 hit 14.8 million. We would like to exceed that level of PS4 when it comes to PS5, the spokesperson said. The statement came in response to a question about the PS5's lower inventory being a consequence of a global semiconductor shortage, which has inhibited how many consoles can be manufactured and could continue, could continue to do so. Quote, however, we have to look at the global shortage of semiconductors, the spokesperson continued. When we try to increase our capacity, we face difficulties because of this global situation, end quote. As we reported in late January, AMD is anticipating chip shortages through the first half of 2021, caused in part by the lack of semiconductors entering the market. AMD's chips help power the PS5, meaning there could well be a knock-on effort for Sony and the production of more PlayStation 5 units. In the shorter term, Sony said it is on track to meet its current year sales target of 7.6 million by 31 March 2020, but notes that it was not able to meet the high level of demand from customers, which it expects to continue into the next fiscal year. Sony's earnings also revealed that the company has sold 4.5 million PS5s as of January 2020, matching the PS4's launch. Tim. Yeah. Is 14.8 million PlayStation 5s in the second fiscal year possible? Possible, yes. Likely, Probable? Yes. I oh, would say. okay. Because I do think the demand is more than there. It really comes down to can they make it happen? And yeah. if if they're the ones saying that they plan to do it, that it's kind of on them. They they're the ones that have the information on the back end of like what all this stuff looks like. like well, they're to me, saying we would like to exceed. I get that, I, but I would like kind of funny to have a million YouTube subs by the time <laughs> you know happen. this episode's over. Is that gonna happen? That's <laughs> say a different story. Want, say five yeah. years. Say ten. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's different, though, because there, there's a call to action that people could do for free immediately mm -hmm. right there that we don't need to like. They could really help us out if they went to YouTube.com slash kind of funny games or kind of funny and subscribe just for free, <laughs> even care. on their grandma's they Google account. Care. You know, that'd be great. <laughs> Whereas if they were to not hit this, that'll bite them in the ass later. You get what I'm saying? Sure. Us just ask for subs. That's asking for subs. Then be like, we plan to do this. It's like, that's going to be bad to investors when they don't. Like, obviously, they're saying this for investors to be happy to look at it and be like, okay, this is something that we can kind of plan on. But like, they could have lowered that number if they didn't actually expect to, to hit it, you know? Sure, sure. And like, of course, there's always going to be the wiggle room. There is the giant asterisk of the pandemic and where we're at, where it's like, there's almost a get out of jail free card when it comes to that with the investors. But I think that it's, it's, I don't think it's as bullish. I think that this is a uh, obvious goal is to outdo the PS4. And I think that they're sure. totally in a place that they're going to do that. Literally every single one of my friends has a PlayStation 5. They did not have PlayStation 4s. It was mixed. Some had PS4s, some had Xboxes, some uh, had neither, some had both. This time, every single one has a PS5. And that's the thing about it that is, I think, you're spot on. What is so interesting about this conversation right now isn't, is this impossible? Could, no, if you if they could get the PlayStation 5s on the shelves, if they could put out this many PS5s, they, I think, will easily outpace the PlayStation 4. Like, you know, blessing, of course, uh, the youth. Uh, he's always talking about, like, when we go into this and I talk about financials and I talk about this, even for me where I'm like, similar stories of like, well, I know my friends are super into PlayStation 5, and I'm talking like Poe even. He, this is, I think, the first console he's ever bought at launch. Blessing always counters with, yeah, and like, when I'm on TikTok, I see p that's what people are creating content about. They're making jokes about the PlayStation 5. It's similar to like, I remember in, oh, Jesus, would have been 2010 maybe, it, being in an airport with IGN. And where I was, it was like, I forget if it was Roper or Dunham, but somebody pointed at this sign that was like, take all your carry your electronics out of your carry-on bag. And they're like, PlayStation's lost the console war because it was the Xbox 360, right? It's like when you think video games, you're being ubiquitous and what are you talking about? Like PlayStation 5 is dominating that conversation. So I do believe that if this thing was able to get out there, I had a, a woman who I won't respond to the email because my email is not for fan requests, email me today with this long uh, letter of like, 
trying to help convince me to help her get a, her husband a PS5. Like that's how desperate people are for these PS5s right now. And it's all tied into this that yes, if you could get the number out, yes, I think you could sell more than 14.8 million PlayStation 5s in the next fiscal year. But with this semiconductor, you're, you're talking about the COVID stuff, which of course is a big part problem and pipelines and productions and all that. Mm-hmm. But on top of that, this semiconductor shortage, like that is also their get out of jail free car. They have two here where they can say, Hey, this thing is going everywhere. This thing is like would sell, but we're hampered by X, Y, and Z. Yeah, totally. I mean, that, and here's the thing: that's always the case. The there was chip shortages with the Switch as well, and it's just like there's. It's very difficult to keep up with demand at once for these new console launches because, okay, cool. Let's look at the the math here. There's over a hundred million PS4s in the wild. Do, like, how many people want a PS5 of those? Probably a majority, at the very least, right? So yeah. of that, it's like, that means that what they expect to have to make tens of millions of PlayStation fives, like available at launch. Like that is extremely ridiculous from every part of the, the pipeline. When you look at it from production to distribution to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And on top of that, like the Nintendo side of it, of just like, yeah, it's the same thing with the 3DS and to, like to the switch. Nobody could have really predicted the success of the switch to the level that it was. Sure. But even then it's like, even if they fully did and fully knew they couldn't have made that much. That's just not how things work. So there's every console launch, except for maybe the Wii U, has this type of <laughs> issue. It's just I do think because of all the factors we've been talking about, the PS5 Series X conundrum is going to last a little bit longer, and it's going to be a little bit harder for people to, to get PS5s. And we see it in our chat every day where people are just like, super upset that they can't get their hands on the playstation 5 and that's understandably sucks. so yeah a ton of people that want to get one and it, but it's like it's just also it's the way it is right now but it's going to change at some point that will change and the 14, how far out do you think that is i mean i honestly don't think that we're that far out about it far out from it but okay. uh that's all it's all relative like i don't know like i think that everyone that wants one that we see in our chat every day complaining that they don't have one We'll have one by June. By June? Okay. Okay. Here's my question. When you start talking about this, and we're taking it from this Sony plans to sell over 14.8 million and put, you know, beat the second fiscal year for a PS4, then I start extrapolating into the longer term of how the PlayStation 5 is going to do overall. Where is it going to land on you know, the usual Wikipedia list of best-selling consoles, right? Do you think both on our side of it, but then internally at Sony, do you think they talk about it like they need to move as fast as possible because they're worried about the industry changing? Do you know, as we continue, like where, where are we going to be in five, seven years right now with consoles? I, you know, I think there'll always be, a, not always, I think there will be a place for them in five to seven years for sure. But do you think that, stranglehold of them has lessened do you think games pass and x cloud and apps on the tv and all that jazz do you think that like the success that playstation saw with playstation 4 is possible with playstation 5 going forward as tech continues to change uh, i mean i think it's even more i think that yeah. the success of the ps4 uh, if anything only convinced every single person that bought a ps4 that they need a ps5 and a ton of other people that didn't that oh shit i missed out i i need to do this and it, like I, again like i said earlier like all of my friends have a PS5 that did not have a PS4. They're now sure. going back. Like We talk on these shows as if like everyone's played God of War. There's a shit ton of people that haven't played God of War or Last yeah, of Us or, or all these things. And now they can because of the PlayStation Plus collection uh, situation. Like, I was telling you a couple days ago, my friend James Burke, Platinum Bloodborne. What the fuck? <laughs> and he did, that, <laughs> he did that on his PlayStation 5 using yeah. the PlayStation yeah. uh, Plus collection thing and it's like um i'm talking about 10 people i know that have ps5s and it's like extrapolating that there's a i'm sure so many other people like that in addition to the millions of people that obviously had a ps4 are like yeah i'm going to get a ps5 why would i not i played all the games i loved there the exclusives who who played ghost of tsushima is not going to want to play ghost of tsushima 2 on ps5 yeah. right Cowards, take that it. game take that game and apply it to all of the rest of sony's library it's like it's so obvious. Like video games are are here. They're in, here in the biggest way they've ever been. Hardware is up in every category, up, yeah. yep. right? Everything's up. Software, hardware, all of that. And it's like PlayStation had that before COVID. PlayStation was dominating. PlayStation was killing. So it's like, it, I don't think that 
that's going to go away once the world goes back to normal. I think gaming is here to stay in a heightened state. It'll never maintain this high, but I, I don't think it needs to for it to beat these numbers. PS5 is going to outsell PS4 by a long shot. Well, I can't wait to see it, and I can't wait for people to be able to walk into the store and buy it, and I can't wait to be able to get a second one and not give it to Kevin just to say, hey, Kevin, look what I have and you don't have. Why would I need two? Kevin, what the fuck's your problem, too, by the way? You know what I mean? You're all, you just cry and cry and crying oh, about us not playing the division with you yesterday during the no, stream. And no, then no what do I see? What do I see in squad yeah. up last night? Fortnite? Fortnite? You're going to go play Fortnite. At Why don't no you play point, division? You got to no do your homework. Ask. You're not listening. You're not listening. We agreed we were going to play f a division. And at no point did anyone go on there and go, hey, division? Division? What does squad up exist for? Is, huh? You should have been, you, you got to be the change FYI, you want to see. You, you got to tell us what you have left you to do. You don't know this. You don't know this. But like Joey hit me up beforehand and was like division. And I was like, all right, I'm going to put it up in the squad up to see if some asshole squeaks his way in and is like, oh, no. Oh, wait, no. She said Fortnite. You were gonna be <laughs> Number two on the Roper Report. Uh, Mass Effect 1 isn't getting some of its DLC in the Legendary Edition because of corruption. This is Matt T. Kim at IGN. Uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition is shaping up to be the definitive version of the original Mass Effect trilogy. Aside from the multiplayer, Mass Effect Legendary Edition will come with nearly every bit of content and DLC except for one piece of DLC from Mass Effect 1 that may be permanently lost. The DLC is Pinnacle Station, an add-on for the first Mass Effect that was originally released on the Xbox 360 and included a new map and 13 combat scenarios to help players hone their skills. Unfortunately, in an interview with Game Informer, Legendary Edition Project Director uh, Mac Walters reveals that despite the developer's best attempts, the DLC's source code is corrupted beyond repair. Word of Pinnacle Station's source code woes actually dates back to when the Mass Effect trilogy was released on PS3. As in the Legendary Edition, Pinnacle Station was not included in the PS3 trilogy at the time the developers uh, shared it was due to source code corruption. That issue persists today, when Walters revealed that attempts to get the DLC into the Legendary Edition were, quote, an emotional roller coaster. Pinnacle Station was actually developed by an external studio called Demiurge. I remember them. Uh, Bioware contacted Demiurge to see if they could get the original Pinnacle Station files from the team in place of Bioware's files. And although Demiurge successfully found the source code, theirs too was corrupt. Walter says the only way to get the DLC into the Mass Effect Legendary Edition is if it were completely remade from scratch, which he says is unfeasible as that would, quote, basically take another full six months just to do that with most of the team we've got, end quote. I wish we could do it, he continues. Uh, honestly, just because this is meant to be everything that the team ever created brought together again, says Walters. And so leaving it all on the cutting room floor, it was heartbreaking, end quote, end story. Not much to add there, Tim, except, man, that sucks. Yeah, it's unfortunate, man. That like that, you know. I wish we still had Jared Petty, God rest his soul, uh, to talk Go, about the preservation a better place. Uh, of video games right, and stuff. Yeah. And you know, I think that DLC and things like that are definitely like the biggest targets of sure. uh, the of loss. Where it there's going to be so many things that just aren't playable in the future. And you know, this one it's still playable on the original versions, but you know, Absolutely. it not being able to make the jump over. It's like that. It, it does suck, but uh, I'm. It's good that they're at least getting ahead of it now and like explaining why so it doesn't seem like they're cutting corners or of course yeah yeah uh two questions uh, jumping off of this tim i haven't mm -hmm. talked to you about mass effect legendary edition number one do you care will you play it no okay, okay. no and no honestly uh i mean i've never really been interested in, in it i also just think that it's gonna be there's no chance that it lives up to the hype for me uh gotcha. from have what, you what ever played presented. any mass effect yeah, I gave Mass Effect one and two a shot, and I okay. just didn't didn't really like them. Uh, the The biggest thing, though, is I think that like they are old enough games that I I can't imagine them playing well for the first time today, even with a shiny coat of paint. Um, with the Mass Effect one getting the Mass Effect two action engine, I can't wait. Yeah, hey, I'm 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 stoked that people are going to be happy about it, and I hope that they enjoy it as much as yeah. they they expect that they're going to. But I've learned more than most that. Uh, Old things coming back aren't always a good thing. And, mm. and sometimes it can be like, oof, damn, this is definitely not as good as I remember it being. Uh, but every once in a while, you get a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2. So hopefully True. hopefully this True. is more in, on, in that side. Although from everything I'm hearing, it's like, I'm just seeing a lot of stuff from this that I'm like, like there's no PS5 version. There's no Xbox One Series X version. Really? That's fucking weird. With where we're at now, come on, guys. Yeah, 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 and yeah. people keep getting mad at me like, oh, so few people have PS5s and 
next year consoles well a lot of people do so it's weird that this game's coming out in 2021 and you don't even have the option for that well, for i feel like game this game's been kicked is, along the road for a long time but but even then though it's been kicked along the road like this is supposed to be the definitive version of older games coming out now and it's like we're, it already is kind of coming out in a place where it's like okay well is there going to be a remastered version of the legendary edition at some point in the future I don't know. It seems messy. I can't wait to go through all this shit like in a year. Where <laughs> this it's all shit. Just, like, <laughs> Games being released on old platforms. <laughs> I mean, I, the, I'm totally down with them being released. It's just a matter of like them uh, like being optimized. And it's like, yeah. it's so funny how many people are coming after me. Like, oh, t- like, it's corporate shit. He's like talking about like the corporations uh, trying to make more money and stuff. I'm like, you realize that you're on their side here. If it's like, you're just saying, well, there's a hundred million PS4s in the world. It's like, I know that, you know, <laughs> it's like, that is, that is a fact. Of course, that's why they're also putting it there. And I don't think that Mass Effect Legendary Edition shouldn't also be there. Yeah, it your argument is, not your PS5. argument. Yeah, I was going to say, your argument isn't it should be exclusive to next, the next gen. I'm going to say just here, give me the, you know, come on, get yeah. off my ass. Uh, your argument is that next gen consumers should be taken care of as well as mm-hmm. uh, everybody else yeah 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 I understand. and like there's just a, a fact of the matter here that ps5 and xbox series x owners are going to have to miss out uh on exclusive titles longer and longer now because of the shortage of hardware so it's like the longer that mm-hmm. sony and microsoft mm-hmm. knows that the general public doesn't have their hands on these things they're not going to be putting things out there that are really pushing shit well i mean even beyond sony and microsoft right you're talking about third party like a third party is going to look at it too even just more like, so install base so. is so small for ps5 xbox series why prioritize putting out that edition just make it for the others they'll get the better load times they'll get the better resolutions on it it doesn't matter whatever yeah, yeah i hear you i understand number two is sim it's in the same vein now did you finish cyberpunk where did, did we ever talk about i don't remember us ever finishing the loop on cyberpunk i i got i'm not done with it yet it hit a point i'm like probably 80 percent through it mm-hmm. hit a point that i'm like I, too many crashes too many things are just like stopping gotcha. me from Fair. going forward that i'm like uh, i'm not gonna rush this i'm gonna just like play through it as i go I you're still enjoying it though. once a week i um, less and less as okay. it goes on it's like i feel like i've gotten out everything i liked about it and everything i loved about it even like i've gotten from it you know yeah understandable number three on the roper report we have more on apple's mixed reality headset this is n ingram over at and gadget uh rumors have swirled about potential vr or ar hardware from apple for years now but today the information has published perhaps the most extensive account of what the company is working on and it paints an ambitious picture According to a source with, quote, direct knowledge of the device, Apple's mixed reality headset will contain more than a dozen cameras for tracking movement and showing real world video to the person wearing it. It is also said to include two 8K displays, giving it a resolution that would far outstrip anything currently on the market. The information believes that the device is in the later stages of development and could ship as soon as 2022. Perhaps, unsurprisingly, Apple's first headset isn't targeted at the wider audience. Its price point is rumored to come in at around $3,000. Given the hardware specs quoted in today's report, that's not unreasonable, but it's clear that this is less a device for consumers and more a competitor for Microsoft's $3,500 HoloLens 2. The headset is focused on business consumers uh, more, I'm sorry, business customers, more than something the average consumer would use. Based on images of a, quote, late stage prototype, end quote, from 2020 that the information saw, Apple's headset is similar to a traditional VR headset in that it blocks the outside world fully and puts the wear into a fully virtual environment. The cameras will be used to give a f- give a few of the outside world. Oh, I think it means view of the outside world. Uh, in this way, it sounds like the headset can function uh, as a true virtual reality device, as well as an augmented reality option that combines real world views with virtual details. Those cameras will enable the device to track eye movements as well as hand gestures. It'll also have LIDAR sensors uh, like those found on the iPhone 12 Pro and iPad Pro to help measure the distance between objects in the real world and properly scale and present virtual objects in a real world space the headbands for the device are said to be interchangeable and will include spatial audio technology similar to what's in airpods pro and airpods max and it sounds like apple is working on its own in-house chips to power the headset no big surprise given uh, that it makes the silicon powering nearly all of its hardware these days tim i believe 
if not the last one, the one before then, you and I on this Games Daily, uh, when we got paired up for the week, had the breaking news of information mm-hmm. about this. It was, is this a real thing? What's going on with it? More information today from uh, the information here. What's your take from it? I mean, my, my first take is I'm shocked that HoloLens is still a thing, let alone a HoloLens 2. I don't know how I totally missed that. Well, I think they backed off HoloLens. It's what they're talking about, which I think honestly makes more sense. If I can, I'll get, I'm going around to get to your question. Where when we talked about the Apple AR VR headset first time around, how much it was going to cost, all this stuff, we were both like, eh, what are they talking about? Now that they're coming in and being like, oh, it's a business solution, that makes more sense to me. In the same way, HoloLens was originally shown off as like, hey, look at this cool shit in Minecraft and some Halo stuff that Cisco's going to go play. Then it became more of a, no, HoloLens is going behind the scenes for a business thing for like what you're using, if whoever industries are using it i don't know but i know that that's what where it ended up going yeah and that makes a lot of sense and you know following up on our conversation a couple weeks ago i think this all adds up to something that very well could be a thing that uh never actually is targeted towards consumers but even if it is it's like it i do think it needs to have that three thousand dollar price point make this a ridiculously premium product that shows off vr to the absolute fullest potential so that normal people get jealous of it want it one day so that eventually when the tech gets cheap enough and can be produced on a major level everyone's like well i need to get it look what happened with the apple watch when it first came out how many people were like oh my god that is so overpriced and i can't believe people would pay that and now where are we where what wearing it i'm wearing it right there one out of every 10 people that if you were like walking down the street is wearing a mask and has a apple watch on (laughs) you know what i mean like yeah it, it just becomes ubiquitous over time. But that time b- gets quicker and quicker as tech grows and goes on. Sure, I remember sure. walking into a Best Buy with Kevin and Alfredo, like, must have been like 12 years ago. I'm sorry, you know ago. Alfredo from Achievement Hunter? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Wow. Uh, and we walked into Best Buy and we went into the, the Magnolia section, which is like the fancy Magnolia. nice section. And they had an uh, OLED TV. Yeah. And it was like, oh my God, it was 12 inches. It was 12 inches, man. And it was $30,000 or something like that. <laughs> but it was like, oh my God, the black levels are perfect. Like it was just like the craziest thing. And now my phone has an OLED screen. Yeah. You know, my TV is 65 inches OLED. It's like that happened pretty quickly, all things considered. So it's like, this is the type of thing where I, VR has been here for years now, since 20, what, 16, 17 officially? Like, depending on which one you're looking at. Exactly. And it's kind of done what it can do. And I think that the proof of that is Half-Life Alex coming out on the more powerful system and then available other places too, uh, where it's like VR definitely has a hold in the mind share of gamers. It just means a very specific thing. And I think that it is a bigger success than it could be, but a smaller success than it could be as well, <laughs> right? It's not like yeah. this game-changing thing that people look at as... Uh, a replacement for video games it's an addition to video games meaning traditional games and uh i think apple doing this we talked about it last time and it's weird right now the timing of the pandemic stuff but apple stores being this place that people go to like almost like a sharper image to like look at tech and look at things that they're not actually going to buy i think is part of the draw of apple and apple stores in particular and i think that this is a perfect type of thing to have there to get people to use be like oh my god this is crazy. And that kind of pushes tech forward, let alone the business side of it all that, you know, meanwhile, doctors are using this, this shit. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. And I think, you know, as we get this report and it seems to be firming up more, you'll start to hear even less about it on games daily as it becomes more of a, like we're talking in like HoloLens two is right. Something for, uh, businesses rather than for, uh, or, you know, the back side of it, uh, rather than consumers. But you make a great point, Tim of, yeah, if you're using it at work or if you go to the hospital and somebody's wearing this and doing something cool and you start to integrate the extraordinary into your daily lives, right? That's when it becomes, not a weird thing to say you're going to go play VR or you're going to, you know, while your wife's in the kitchen, you're going to put on a headset and do something like there's these weird stigmas and, you know, things you have to power through with new technology. And yeah, if Apple's behind it and putting it out there, let's go and just let's get go. me, get me Google glasses that look like this. That's all I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to be able to see a little turn. I want a HUD. I want a HUD. Not for my health. That can go. What away. do you want to see? What do you want to see? I want a HUD where, I want to, where I'm going to turn, you know, like in Google maps. Turn. Uh, it you know, sounded like, like you say, I want to see little turds. Oh man, if I get a little turd filter, there's <laughs> going all the time. Sure, why not? Can they talk to me? Can it be like Clippy, but it's a turd? 
Number four on the Roper Report. <laughs> Hitman 3 has released a roadmap for what's coming up. We go to Darren over at GameSpot.com. IO Interactive has revealed the February roadmap for Hitman 3, which kicks off with the Bakersville Barney Escalation contract in the Dartmoor level. The goal here is to eliminate the entire uh, Carlisle family and make each murder look like an accident. Uh, featured contracts on the Dubai level will arrive on February 11th, courtesy of video and podcast show MinMax. IO Interactive says that you can expect to use plenty of bananas in these contracts. The Sinbad Stringent Escalation contract will be added on February 18th and will also take place in Dubai. Unlike other escalation contracts, these missions will feature Agent 47 practicing his knife throwing skills against boxes and, ha- I'm sorry, that have been arranged throughout the level, with each slain cube containing some sort of surprise. The second round of featured contracts will bring players back to Dartmoor, with each mission having been created by the crew at Kind of Funny. That's hey. right, motherfuckers. And when they say the crew, they mean Blessing. Blessing is doing this. Uh, owners of the Hitman 3 Deluxe Edition will have two exclusive escalation missions on February 23rd, which will also reward those players with unique items. Uh, the Gauchino uh, and Quick Antiquity on the Mendoza map will add the Guru suit uh, and, and Medic Poison Syringe Pen and and, and Medic Grenade uh, to Agent 47's R once those missions have been completed. Nobody cares about those. Blessing, what are you bringing to Dartmoor? Are you bringing the heat, son? Oh, I'm bringing some goodness. Now, I'm actually very excited about this because not only am I creating Hitman featured contracts, the community is also. Because uh, the way we're doing this, yeah. Uh, last week, we, we made a link called kindoffunny.com slash Hitman where people can go and submit their own Hitman contracts. Basically, we're using that and we're taking in submissions from the community. And so we're going to have five submitted contracts for Hitman feature contracts. Uh, one made by me, one made by Snow Mike Mike, and then three from the community, from, uh, one from PC, one from, PS, uh, one from PlayStation, and one from Xbox. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. It's going to be awesome. Very, very cool. Yeah. yeah, good shit. That's really cool, man. Tune into the kind of funny stream happening right after this for more info on that. Oh, really? Right after this? More stuff, Yeah. Huh? Oh, my Twitch. God. Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Very exciting. Can't wait. Uh, And then lastly, Hitman's three first elusive target mission will arrive on February 26th and run through March 8th. The Deceivers take place in the first Hitman spots in the level, uh, and you'll be tasked with eliminating two targets. This will be the type of content that players can expect in Hitman 3 as outside of a possible remix of... uh, as outside of remaining stages, IO Interactive has no plans to add new levels or worlds to the Assassination Sandbox. Timothy. Yeah. That's cool. It's really cool. It's really, really cool to see kind of funny in a press release like this, too. Did we talk about this with you? Did you know this no, was happening? I forget. I didn't, okay, cool. I didn't yeah, until this yeah, morning when I got yeah. the, the press release in, in my email. I'm like, oh, that's really fucking cool. And also Minmax. Shout out to them. Never heard of them. So rad. Don't like them. I already don't like him. You know, I'm, no, I'm kidding. Ben Hansen been on the show many a time and will be again. We need to get uh, Min Max back. I uh, know that's super cool and it's super cool that, yeah, IO reached out for this. And it was, you know, uh, yeah, PR it, it hit us up and was like, hey, do you guys want to do this? And Blessing was all over it. Yeah. So he's going to go do that. And that's really cool. And I'm glad the community's involved. So, yeah, keep your eyes peeled. Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games right after this for more information. And of course, you can go to our new YouTube channel, youtube.com slash kind of funny plays to find the stream if you missed it and it's archived and everything else. Here comes. Lucy James giving me a coffee refill. I'll tell you what, GameSpot.com, what a site. And speaking of GameSpot.com, number five on the Roper Report, uh, NFL Game Jam is coming. This is Eddie over at GameSpot. Uh, The NFL is looking to expand its presence in mobile gaming, the most popular gaming platform in the U.S., and has announced a new game jam of sorts where developers can create football video games with NFL branding. The NFL signed a deal with the esports company Skills, that's with a Z, to host what it's calling a Global Game Developer Challenge. Developers and studios can create NFL-themed games using uh, the Skills esports platform and successfully games will get a joint marketing support of the NFL and skills with a Z. Uh, the game jam will take place in Q2 of 2021. Developers can create any type of game they want, uh, except it can't be an 11 V 11 simulation style game because EA sports holds the exclusive rights to those types of games. I know Tim, you're not yep. an NFL guy, guy. I know most of the chat doesn't care about the NFL. I just thought it was cool that, hey, here's a game jam. We hear about game jams all the time, the indie train jam, all that kind of stuff. I thought this is a cool thing of like, we want to do more on this platform. We don't exactly know. So what does everybody want to do and pitch and maybe we can sign a contract? Yeah, that is pretty cool, especially not something expected from NFL. Yeah. You know, so. It sounds like something you'd expect more from the FCF. That's, that's fan control football. You know, and, you know, I don't know if you know this first snap. 
the Wild Aces taking on the Glacier Boys uh, uh, Saturday, uh, 5 p.m., uh, February 13th. Twitch.tv slash FCF. Come on, hang out. Actually, uh, Twitch.tv is such kind of funny games. We'll be streaming it together and yelling at people. So come vote with the things. I digress. Yeah, just a cool thing, I thought. A nice little nod there. Yeah. Um, sat, just looking at the headline, I thought this was NFL Street related somehow. Oh, God, can you imagine? God. I was never an NFL Street guy, personally. Yeah. But you like the uh, NBA Street, right? Oh, I mean, you, you like the Street franchise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The NBA was my freaking shit. But I, I actually, I don't think I even played NFL. I played FIFA Street, and okay. I, I, got, I was okay with that. But uh, yeah, I just, I'll take any of it at this point because that just would be a good sign that NBA Street has a, a chance to come back. Hey, Amen. If EA can bring back college football, they can bring back anything. Don't worry about it. And if <laughs> yeah. they bring back skate, if they're bringing back skate, you know, in 12 years, I'm sure they can bring back street too. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll keep mm-hmm. on them. Don't worry about it. Uh, number six, sad news. Uh, Bethesda, fa- the Bethesda founder has passed away. I'm going to read uh, in, in its entirety the post Bethesda put up shortly before we went live. We are deeply saddened to tell you the passing of Robert A. Altman, our founder, founder and CEO. He was a true visionary, friend, and believer in the spirit of people and the power of what they could accomplish together. He was an extraordinary leader and an even better human being. During the pandemic, Robert would send out an email every week to keep in touch with everyone in the company. Everyone always looked forward to these, and we thought we'd share one of his notes with you. To the ZeniMax family, last week I mentioned some small pleasures I discovered as a byproduct of the lockdown. Some of you have since written to share your own experiences and describe other quiet joys work from home brings. The growing numbers of songbirds in our backyards, quieter streets, adventurous efforts baking bread and mixing cocktails, long walks, restaurant takeout, time to read. While we clearly miss treasured social interactions, something valuable has been gained too. We know many are feeling the pressure of isolation and the stresses related to our current circumstances. Again, I urge you to make time for yourselves daily, schedule online social gatherings, and keep your perspective knowing this will pass. Tomorrow, I encourage everyone to take a break and toast our company's 21st birthday and reflect on the long journey we have taken together. You've done something extraordinary, something a few startups ever do. You've created a multinational, multi-billion dollar business stacked with talent at all levels of the company, carving out a leadership role, earning the admiration of our toughest competitors and devoted fans. And you have done it the right way, always faithful to our core principles of integrity, respect, team, quality. Don't let the day pass without taking a moment to enjoy your remarkable creation. Looking forward to being back together as always. Stay safe. Back to Bethesda's write-up. We are proud to carry the values and principles Robert taught us. We, spend our de- we expe- extend our deepest sympathies to Robert's family, who are a part of our family and have always treated us as a part of theirs. Thank you for everything you did for us, Robert. Rest in peace. Sad stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. And it's that thing, of course. I didn't know. I did not know Robert Altman. You'd be surprised the amount of CEOs I don't know. <laughs> but I thought, <laughs> you know, his letter hits home, I think, for on so many levels for what work from home and COVID in 2020, 2021 have been and stuff. And so obviously we grieve alongside all of our uh, friends and colleagues at Bethesda and send well wishes to the family. Totally, man. And, you know, this is a sad thing that comes up every once in a while but and more and more, unfortunately. But like video games are just they're finally hitting that age that people yeah. are going to yeah, start yeah. dying, you know? And it's like that, yeah. that wasn't a thing. And it's, it's crazy that our industry is now <laughs> going to start facing the same things that everyone else does. Cause that's life. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, I always talk about how games have matured with me. Right. But yeah, that does mean obviously creators getting older and then just obviously, you know, the unexpected and unpredictability nature, unpredictable nature of life and what that can mean and stuff like that. Cause yeah, it is that weird thing of thinking about like what'll happen when, you know, your favorite creators, your favorite podcasters, the people you, you know, take for granted because their entertainment or whatever do pass, right? And I think movies and Hollywood and all that kind of stuff, you've gotten used to that. You see that, you understand that happens, right? But then, yeah, in our sphere, it's, it's always a, a very interesting thing that I think we're all still learning things too. So, yep. yeah, obviously, uh, everything uh, but love. Or, I'm with everything... Uh, I don't know. I never know what to say. Thoughts and yeah. prayers always has been has been drugged through the mud, obviously. But our hearts are with everyone as they grieve on this. Yeah, for sure. I figured I would end with number seven, a short stack of financials. Here's just some really boring, not boring stuff. It's stuff that makes you go, where you, read it, where you have your coffee and you, read it, you go, hmm. But there's not much to say. Uh, <laughs> we're going to start with Joe Screvels at IGN, who talks about Konami is finding money in games. Konami's digital entertainment business, uh, which includes, quote, mobile games, computer and video games and card games, not only propped up Konami's financial year amid the pandemic, but drove it to record high profits. In the company's latest earnings release, Konami makes it clear that many of its business segments, including casino gaming, sports clubs, and amusements, suffered major drops in revenue due to lockdowns and societal effects of the pandemic. However, as we've seen across the industry, 
industry, at-home gaming saw a huge boost, with Konami's digital entertainment division seeing revenue and profits grow substantially. Then there, it, obviously, it, fin- obviously the you know uh, financials are being released, so there's all sorts of stuff out there with percentages and whatever. I always find those stories kind of boring, and if they're not like, I think that summarizes it. Joe did a great job. We can move on from there. Uh, James Bachelor over at GamesIndustry.biz is talking about Square Enix. Square Enix is on course for a year of growth with a solid first half offsetting losses in its main games division during uh, the most recent quarter. Uh, In addition to digital uh, back catalog sales, Square Enix attributes this to the release of Final Fantasy VII Remake and Marvel's Avengers! Although the publisher had previously acknowledged the games, uh, the game did not meet expectations. Uh, obviously, that was a much bigger thing, but that's the thing there. They're doing all right, too. You know, that's how that's being offset. And then this is not from a financial report, but more the fact that, of course, Jeff Bezos has left Amazon as C- or is leaving Amazon CEO role. Now the new CEO is talking about games there. Uh, we go to Jordan Oleman at IGN. Amazon's incumbent CEO, Andy Jassy, has pledged his support to the company's gaming division following reported internal struggles at Amazon Game Studios. In an email seen by Bloomberg, Bloomberg, Jassy uh, acknowledged uh, the difficulties faced so far, which have been uh, which have seen games like Crucible being shut down only months after its official launch. "Quote: Some businesses take off in the first year, and others take many years. Though we haven't consistently succeeded yet at in, in Amazon Game Studios, we believe we will if we hang in there." Uh, Jassy is set to replace Amazon CEO and founder Jeff Bezos later this year when Jeff Bezos announced he was stepping down on Tuesday. Tim, you got anything to add to any of those? Uh, the Amazon stuff is interesting. We'll see where it goes, if anywhere. Like, I, I always expected Amazon to buy up studios as opposed to just doing its own thing. Uh, yeah. Buying up studios of, of consequence. Um, and I think that with Microsoft having the strategy it has currently, uh, especially with Game Pass, which is just like, gobble them up. I, gobble, I don't know. Gobble, gobble. And also with, you know, uh, THQ Nordic doing its thing as well. We are the Embracer group and we will take everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I don't I don't really... I don't have too much faith in the Amazon games being a, a real thing that uh, we'll be talking about too much in any positive light. Understandable. Yeah, I mean, we've seen so many people try to step into that realm and just not do it. I mean, Stadia, right, this uh, week as well. So we'll totally. have to wait and see how it shakes out for Amazon. Before you do that, though, Greg, a mm-hmm. random fact that I am shocked about is that Robert Altman, mm-hmm. the Bethesda CEO, is Linda Carter's husband. Correct. Whoa. Did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was one of the, like, I, I think for most, I shouldn't say most people, that was like the, if you if you remember a couple years ago during one of the Bethesda E3 conferences, like it was the one of like uh, them parroting like uh, single player games not being dead or whatever, and they did it like Arms of the Angels, Sarah McLaughlin yeah. style. She opened it. And a lot of people yeah. were like, why is Linda Carter here? And then it would be like, oh, she's married to ZeniMax CEO. So there you go. That's Wonder truly, Woman, if you don't know. Truly bizarre. Not, not Gal and not Susan. This is, you know, Wonder Woman from the TV show. I digress. Tim, mm-hmm. if people want to be part of the show, they can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Of course, if you go there, you can be part of the show. You can write in. You can be a Patreon producer. You can watch early access and stuff. You can have a great time. But more importantly, right now, you can get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, Greg Way, this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by Brooklinen. Life is too short to sleep between anything less than really nice sheets. But maybe you looked at some retailers and calculated the years of interest you'd pay on just one set and gave up. Trust me. Out Brooklinen. So Brooklinen was started by Rich and Vicky, who also tried to get beautiful home essentials that didn't cost an arm and a leg. But when they couldn't, they founded Brooklinen. As the first direct-to-consumer bedding company, they worked direct- directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury markups. Brooklinen has a variety of sheets, colors, patterns, and materials to fit your needs and tastes. Brooklinen has over 50,000 five-star reviews and counting. They are so confident you will love their product. They even offer you 365 days of money-back guarantee. Uh, and Brooklinen is so much more than sheets. They've got comforters, towels, uh, pillows, loungewear, and more. I know Brooklinen very well because I use Brooklinen sh- uh, sheets and towels each and every day. That's right. Sleep on them. Love them. They were easy to get. They were affordable, and I can't recommend them enough, honestly. Uh, go to brooklinen.com and use the promo code GAMES to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more, plus free shipping. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Enter the promo code GAMES to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more, plus free shipping. brooklinen.com, promo code GAMES at checkout. 
Our next sponsor is Honey, and you know it's one of my favorite sponsors to read because I don't need to look at anything because I use Honey all the freaking time. I mean, I sleep in the Brooklyn sheets, but then Honey as well right there. I can, I'm tapping on Google Chrome, Kevin. I'm right there tapping on my little Honey uh, icon. Honey, of course, is a little extension you install in your browser. It works on all browsers. You install it. The little H is there, and then when you go to check out online at a bunch of different retailers, what happens? This little coin. He comes down, and he starts dancing like this, and when he dances there, what he does is he runs all the different promo codes you could be using on this site. He does this to get you the best deal. You put it in there. You save money. Honey is free. You just install it. You're good to go. You got it. It's free. However, if you log in like I do, you accrue Honey coins, which then it can then be spent on like Amazon gift cards and stuff. There's other stuff you can spend them on, but I spend them on Amazon because I do a lot of Amazon stuff. Now, let me look at that because I always want to make sure I nail the part they want me to at the very end here, right? Honey, Honey has found it's sweet. over... <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that should be it have do they have a catchphrase because honey yeah, it's sweet would be pretty good they, they do i forget what it is it's at the bottom though but no anyways uh honey has found over 17 million members over two billion dollars in savings honey supports all kinds of retailers from tech and gaming sites to fashion brands and even food delivery it's simple if you have a computer honey should be on it it's free and works with whatever browser you use you can get honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash games that's joinhoney.com slash games so they know we sent you thank you honey for supporting this episode and of course always remember honey it's sweet honey 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 tim (laughs) i can't wait to see what i save money on next with honey but that purchase is so far away if i wanted something more immediate say what came to the mom and grab shops where would i go the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. <laughs> yeah. I laugh because I glanced at the chat. You know how we're like, you know, go to joinhoney.com slash games so we know they sent you. And in the chat, Joshy G731 goes, Kind of Funny sends their regards. <laughs> <laughs> We out. grabbed the little dancing honey guy and just slit his throat. <laughs> out today. <laughs> I, look, I want honey to know it was me. It was kind of funny. Out today, Project Winter on Xbox One, Haven on PS4 and Switch, Nuts on Switch and PC, Werewolf, The Apocalypse, Earthblood, PlayStation 5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One PC. Jesus. Uh, I've been playing that. Uh, it's out right now. Simon, or no, not Simon. Simon Review Destruction All-Star. Someone at IGN gave Werewolf, The Apocalypse a four. And I'll tell you, that's pretty spot on. Cause it Why is are like you it, Greg? Cause we and Blessing looked at it on PS I Love You XOXO and like we were watching it and it looks like was, the chat nailed it. Somebody in the chat, I'm sorry I don't remember off the top, said uh this looks like what I I remember PS2 games looking like. You know what I mean? Mm. Love how you have those like glasses, like not that it would look good, but like that's what it looks like. And so it I just needed to see it, Tim. I just needed to do it. So I went and played it and it it does play like a PS2, PS3 game, and like it's something out of time where it feels like it's like Rogue Warrior. Where it's like this game that exists, but like how does this exist and stuff? Yeah. So it's a weird, goofy one. Uh, at one point in a cutscene, Jen was watching me, and it's like they don't—it doesn't look good. And then like the character, the, all these characters are just standing there, and then the char- the main character started moving, and the other characters just rotated. And Jen's like, "They're just rotating the character models. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> moving them. They're just going Mrr. like nothing is in. It doesn't matter." Uh, Blue Fire is on Switch and PC. Aircraft Carrier Survival is on PC. Skyforge is on Switch. Uh, Conorarium is on Switch. Uh, Kowloon High School Chronicles on Switch. Gray Skies, A War of the World Story is on Switch. Uh, Odysseus, Cosmos, and his Robot Quest is on Switch. Flying Hero X is on Switch. Football Cup 2021 is on Switch. Bayako Tai, Samurai Boys is on Switch. Station Manager is on Switch. Uh... Uh, Diger Addy bestsellers is on Switch. Field of Glory 3 Medieval is on PC. This week, GTA Online debuts a new armored truck with plenty of room in the back for your heist crew uh, while giving players the chance to score even more lucrative rewards in the Cayo Perico heist uh, with an extra 50% uh, in GTA money and RP. It is uh, in its finale alongside waived setup costs. Plus, those yet to tackle the heist can get started with 25% off the Kosatka Submarine. Uh, and then, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Tear J. Hakanosin's Powder VR uh, is available on Steam for early access right now. What do you got? Before you get to the new dates, uh, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't at least bring up what Kevin just slacked me. Which, sure. God, chat, I need you to be cool. This stays here. Dude, this is something that we just... Would, just... Chat, just, hold on, hold on. Chat, be if cool. You tell Everybody, him, if, Tim, if you tell I'll give him the everyone. context. I'm going to give the context, Kev. Don't worry. 
Okay. What's the context? <laughs> he slacks me. Do you think we would get in trouble with Honey if we request fan art of Smiley, the kind of funny Smiley, going down on Coiny? Now, this, of course, is a reference to the old kind of funny morning show where we requested fan art of uh, the kind of funny smiley and loopy, the Let's Play logo uh, showing our unification or whatever. And then we (laughs) showed all the art on screen because we were like, it's cartoons. You can show stuff. So we showed a a one piece of art that was the Let's Play logo uh, getting fellatio from the kind of funny smiley. And we thought it was hilarious. And we moved on. And then Twitch emailed us. It was like, what the fuck? Guys, one what of the, the only fuck? times Twitch has ever reached out to us. Like, we've done so much dumb shit, and that was their like, guys, no. But I, the thing that's most surprising to me, Kev, about this is that the thing has a name and it's coiny. No, it doesn't. I made that up. I made oh. that up. But that sounds oh, that right, good. right? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was good, Kev. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if I, I did an email, a great email cleanse a long time ago mm. about like uh, trying to clean. I was wondering if I still had the, no, that was so Which long ago. Email? I would, I should have like, kept hey. that email. Yeah. I'm just like, hey, like, you, you guys are great. Us? We love your content. We love everything. You showed two logos <laughs> engaged in oral <laughs> sex. Like, turns out that is a violation of rule. And I was like, oh, I thought because it wasn't people, it was okay. And they're like, no, no, uh, he had a giant a, dick. That is not baby cool. Baby. That is not cool. Yeah. We learned. We learned that one here. We're here. Uh, new dates for you. Shoot 1UP DX is coming to PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 on uh, February 11th. Loop Hero is coming to PC via Steam on March 4th. Healer's Quest is coming to Nintendo Switch on February 11th. Altair, Mr. Or, that's not right. Uh, uh, ATLR, right? Uh, Mysterious Trilogy Deluxe Pack is coming out on April 22nd, 2021 for the Switch, PlayStation 4, and PC. Uh, Fusim, FW Sim, but all one word, Fireworks Display Simulator will be released through Steam Early Access on February 16th. There you go. There Deals you go. of the day f- deals today for you we got xbox free play deals uh, for you uh the sims 4 and poyo poyo tetris 2 are all available for xbox live gold and xbox game pass ultimate members to play right now uh from thursday to sunday night at midnight so you got some games to go out there and get into you know have some fun i have a question here we got like three minutes i probably should save it for the post show uh so instead we'll squat up Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, you can write into patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Give us your questions, your comments, your concerns, and your squad up requests. If you squad up with us, it means you give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you, and everybody plays games together. Today, Luke, the avid indoorsman, needs help on PlayStation 5. Luke's PSN name is Luke High Walker 06. All one word. Luke High Walker 06. What's good, Greg and Tim? The new COD... Wait, what the hell was that? They can't Kevin, were you playing Hitman hit music over there? You starting uh, some streams well, up over there? Yeah, come on. We're getting the ball rolling. You know what it is? I like it. Well, what's good, Tim and Greg? The new Call of Duty Cold War Zombies map just dropped today, and I'm looking for some best friends to learn the map with and hopefully beat the Easter egg when it's unlocked. I'm usually on late afternoons and weekend days central time. If you would like to play some Call of Duty Cold War Zombies, you can hit up Luke High Walker 06 on PlayStation 5 and play that together. Do it, uh, cowards. We ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. Um, oh, hold on. Maybe this actually did. This might have turned into news because uh, here's what I, I'll let you know, Tim. Mm-hmm. You Please. know that I'm a man of very particular tastes. Sure. And when I love something, I love it to death. You pickles. know what I mean? And I, yeah, pickles, exactly. Claws and pickles. pickles. Uh, what I like a lot is that it appears there's another man of taste out here, and his name is Frankfurter, who puts in this misdate thing, a Miss News mix, misdate. And it also was the question that I'm saving for the post show. It's all about Stubbs the Zombie. Stubbs mm. the Zombie had its achievements posted, leading everybody to be like, oh my gosh, it's coming out or whatever. And then there's still no official news. So I was saving it for the question, which I still will hear. This is not an official thing, so it's just moving on. So Stubbs the Zombie's back, and we're going to talk about that in the post show, everybody. There is, back other than that, nothing. We didn't get anything wrong. You know what I mean? No, he, I mean, he was already dead, and he's never dead. You know, Stubbs the Zombie never dies. He's undead, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every week down a variety of platforms. We run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, of course, be part of the show. Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games where you can get your questions in, get the show ad free, and head over to hear some Stubbs the Zombie talk right now. Of course, if you don't want to do that right now, or maybe you're doing it later, because I guess you have to, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can stay here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Uh, Blessing and Stowbike Mike are up next. They're playing some Hitman and Apex and explaining what is going on with this Hitman challenge we are doing with IO Interactive. Um, other than that, remember tomorrow, it's the final kind of funny uh, games daily of the week. It's going to be the kind of funny spotlight. It'll be me and Laura Kate Dale. There it is. She wrote a book called Things I Learned from Mario's Butt. Uh, me and Tim are both in it. We wrote about butts in it, and I believe Tim still has my copy. I actually have dropped things off at Tim's house, and I still haven't gotten huh. a copy. What yeah, a so that's I have upsetting. a Greg Miller pile of things. I should probably come by today because I'd like to have that book for tomorrow. It, it reminds cool. him of you, though. You know what I mean? So we take that. Pile this away. is how you remind me. Nickelback. This is how you remind me of who I really am. What? Now I like you <laughs> to say sorry. <laughs> I love so you from a different you know I mean? story. He tries his hardest. Monocoder in the chat says uh, Greg's tweet on September 23rd, 2017 stated, "Quote: I'd love fan art of the Let's Play logo and the kind of funny logo banging." Nailed it. And I got it. You it's guys delivered. Tweet. You know it's what I mean? Tweet, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a post show to do. So until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs> For 